Okay. All right, it is the full hour and I see people slowly joining. So I'll give it one more minute or less. Because it just turned to zeros here. All right. Well, thank you everyone for joining. I wanted to give everyone a chance um, to ask about GitLab releases. Um, whether I can answer everything, I don't know, but we'll have enough people uh, in this call to uh, maybe divide and conquer. Um, so I see I see DT placed a lot of questions in, which I really, really appreciate. You're welcome. So, uh, awesome. Do you want to speak up? Yeah, yeah. I, uh, of course. It's 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 a uh, it's very bright and early here in uh, in California. Um, but I had a lot of questions that have been brewing for many, many, many months. Um, so I hope you don't mind if I just like plastered them down on your dock. Great. All right. Um, well, you have a commentary, so let's start with that commentary and then I'll start answering your questions. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. Um, so my name is DT. I've been here for two and a half years. I'm a solution architect. Um, I love talking about GitLab with our, our customers, especially in Silicon Valley. Um, uh, one of the things that's, uh, uh, I've been, I've been in this business for a long time and it is, it is, it is a rare bird to have a dot com, a SaaS offering in parity with your, your self managed or on prem offering. So kudos to that. Um, we pull that off. I still don't know how sometimes, um, but it's refreshing to be able to, to share that story with our customers. I don't know if you have any thoughts on, on, on how we've done that. All right, Viti, I see that there are some questions about the Zoom link. I don't know why there is a difference at the moment. Yeah, take your time. Yeah, sorry, Marin. It's it's the uh, um, it's in the invite is different, so it seems like we need to send out the in, uh, send out an updated invite. Sorry for the interruption. No worries. Uh, no, thank you for raising that up. Uh, yeah, Christopher. I saw like <laughs> about eight or nine people in that room. Uh, I don't know what their interest is, but uh, just I'm just like... checking the the calendar. Um, both invites I have currently have the same value, so I don't know why there is a. I think a to reload their calendars. Sometimes Google does not sync without reloading the calendar. I think that's the problem, because both have been updated. Yeah, I, thank you. I suffered from that. It was probably an out of date calendar. Um, how did we manage to do this, DT? Um, I think the fact that we uh, started uh, very early on in the company's history, ensuring that we do not diverge between .com and self-managed. In the very, very, very early uh, days of GitLab, we had a bit of a diff between GitLab.com and self-managed. Um, we had a separate branch where we deployed uh, GitLab.com uh, from. And luckily, even very early on there, we uh, realized that this doesn't, doesn't scale, even with the couple of us that were in the company at that time. So from then on, it was um, imperative to ensure that uh, we first deployed to .com and then only release to self-managed customers. So I have a tiny bit of an edit to your comment there. We actually deployed to .com prior to releasing. So uh, customers are actually behind uh, us, which is, I think, uh, a really good good thing uh, to experience because we get to not necessarily test, but we get to uh, see um, the features and uh, any bugs uh, quicker than, than our customer in most cases, which is, which is really great. 
Sure. And it's a model. It's, it's, it's an incredible model. So um, yeah, it's just, I'm just a kudos because <laughs> usually it's like the on-prem is like this, it's like six months behind, it's a year behind and they, they can't support certain features. And even when you get it, like things aren't turned on. And um, so parity, like as much par the closing the gap on parity between them is fantastic. So that's awesome. one of the things I love about GitLab. Um, um, go for it. Next question. Yeah. The next question was, um, I noticed that um, I was, and thank you for the link to the handle hand on releases. Uh, that sounds like we've changed that recently and I, I had to catch up myself. So it sounds like we're doing um, many successful deployed auto deploy releases on .com, getting closer to, to CD, which is fantastic. Um, but how do we balance it against the, like the SLAs for, you know, uptime with gitlab.com and not breaking something? So this is why we don't say we have a continuous deployment uh, and um, we stop deployments, automated deployments. We progress them all the way to production, but just short of production. So Canary is the last um, environment where uh, we automatically deploy to and you all without enabling anything work on Canary, even if, uh, even if you don't know that. So all of our GitLab org traffic, all of our GitLab com traffic and a couple of other routes are automatically routed to the Canary. Um, once that is done, we ensure that uh, all of our metrics, everything is still in order before we progress further to production. So production deployment still requires a manual uh, click on a button um, inside of the pipeline when we are ready. So currently this is how we are balancing it. Um, just to give some time to our um, test automation to catch up, to cover as many things as possible. So between different stages, we run, always run automated QA. Right now, only smoke testing uh, is blocking. The whole test suit uh, is still not blocking, uh, but we are um, slowly getting there, I think, with, uh, uh, with the quality department uh, doing some amazing job there. And the ultimate goal is that the automated QA testing is going to inform uh, progression to um, production as well. And hopefully by, uh, by that time, the stated goal of 99.95 uh, is going to be uh, just reinforced uh, with the deployments rather than um, possibly uh, lowered. Does that answer your question? Uh, you had me at Canary, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, how has recently combining CE and E into single repo helped the new release cycle velocity? Um, I'm going to speak for myself here and I'm going to tell you that just it is, it has been such a huge change uh, for, for us at the delivery team because we don't have to go and uh, chase around everyone to ensure that there are backports done in E that you know uh, where things need to end up with, depending on which, um, um, which edition we need to ship. Um, this, this is only exposed, like this diff of now uh, us running on a single code base uh, versus a previous uh, a way of doing things is very much visible in the security releases that we are still doing in the old system. And the amount of work there is, is staggering. Developers need to duplicate everything they do. And then we also have to duplicate everything we do because we need to test everything two times. And it is just, it is just so much easier, it's so much faster. So just to paint you a quick picture here, previously, every time you would merge something into CE, it would take between 15 minutes to a half an hour for that thing to end up in EE. Then the tests would run at two hours there. Then we would only able to build uh, the enterprise edition package that we deployed to dot com, which adds another hour. And that is multiple hours before you can even get to uh, deployment. Now we only check GitLab, um, the single repo. We only have one set of tests that we are waiting for and then um, we, we package and deploy. That has cut almost a half of our time uh, that we spend on, on waiting for commits to, to pass. So 
it has been outstanding, I would think, at least from my perspective. Developers should speak up about uh, their perspective. And Mar, in that situation you described, that's kind of the happy path where we didn't even have merge conflicts to deal with and stuff was broken for days. Absolutely. Good uh, call out, Robert, there. Um, Baron, you said for engineers to speak up. I would just like to add, yeah. uh, I think I speak for a lot of us that we consider that moment to be decisive in the history of GitLab, and we can consider there to be a before single code base and after single code base. It's that that much of a dramatic change. So thank you all for who, are, who work on that and in behalf of the engineering team. Awesome. Awesome to hear that, Andrew. Thank you. So as a corollary to that, Marin, um, I work with, with several customers or prospects that are um, looking to move to us. And they've, they've been in uh, the monorepo, um, uh, they're in a monorepo, a monorepo <clears throat> situation. Um, and they're, they're you know, like a single repository, multiple releases or multiple products in a single repo. Um, I would love to be able to share our story to them as to like the benefits of keeping things together like merging back together, not having like 100 services and 100 pieces of the pie to, to come together. But um, uh, yeah, it's, it's like just speaking from, speaking from like dog fooding what we do, um, that's something I'm looking forward to talking about. Always uh, hit me up on that and we can have a AMA session about that uh, alone. For sure, for sure. Um, all right, next item, unsigned. What are our test cycles in automation time? So, uh, unknown uh, asker here. Um, I can answer on how much time it takes us to um, run our whole test suite inside of GitLab. Um, last time I checked, it was an hour and a half, I think, from start to finish. Luckily, with the new features we are building, we have some now un unblocking things that can uh, that we are running in parallel. Um, but that is still, in my opinion, um, quite a lot of time. Um, I know Quality is working on their specifically engineering productivity to find a way to reduce that part um, of uh, of our wait time, and the automation of actually deploying. Uh, so from the moment some something gets merged and selected to go into um, deployment to actually being deployed, I can tell you that relatively quickly, we're still building all our dashboards to, uh, to track that as well, by the way. But um, it takes approximately an hour to get from your commit being selected to go uh, to .com to be deploying, to be deployed to staging. Then it takes, I think, around 15 minutes to do smoke testing and around two hours to run the full test suit. Um, quality engineers need to correct me because we, we keep changing things, things get better. So I, I might be working with outdated information already. Um, and within an hour from that, we are already on, on Canary uh, where we also run uh, automated QA. So, Basically, within two hours, you can kind of expect to have your commit um, on, on at least on Canary, and at an hour and a half if if your pipeline is still running inside of GitLab Codebase itself. Thanks, Mac, for uh, linking that. And part of this is important because we, we advocate for like shift left and running security scans and doing CI pipelines every single commit. Um, uh, and we're trying to like in the field, we're trying to balance the like when and where jobs are run so that like as, a, as an engineer, you're kicking off things, uh, you're not waiting for 15 minutes, you're waiting for like two minutes or three minutes, right? Yeah. Um, so it's, I, love, I love these stats. So thanks for, thanks, uh, thanks for sharing that and Mech for the details. Yeah. Um, yeah, there is a lot of improvements to be done there. Um, we are sometimes uh, too fast for ourselves, so <laughs> I'm uh, I'm sure things are going to only get better further. Um, 
next question with the combined repo, how do we still split out uh, and release a core or community edition uh, for open source or license sensitive users? Um, so we have mirroring set up between uh, GitLab repository and GitLab dash fast repository, which is um, the repository we use to build the community edition package from. What happens between those two repositories is we have uh, a script running on schedule that removes the proprietary code that is uh, localized inside of the EE directory and we commit the result. So we always fetch new changes from master, remove the repositories with proprietary code, commit those changes into FOSS repository. And then when we are ready to release we pull from that FOSS repository and build the GitLab Community Edition. That way we ensure that there, are no, there is no proprietary code and Community Edition remains to, to work. Um, we also run tests to ensure that um, once we do remove the proprietary code, GitLab still works. Um, and uh, finally, we have the, the, the final check basically is one of our production instances, devgitlab.org runs GitLab Community Edition. Knock on wood, it hasn't went down, um, well, in a long, long, long time. So uh, if something does fall through cracks and uh, uh, we don't catch it with testing, we're going to see it very quickly. And one really interesting thing about devgitlab.org is that this is where we build our packages from for our customers. So we cannot just brush it off and say, oh, well, it's not really important. Literally, it is a stop uh, the world situation if GitLab Community Edition uh, package does not work. We need to figure it out and fix it. So that is like the last, last gate uh, that we have. One quick follow-up on that, uh, and I'm thinking of my customers in mind, um, is, is the segregation between uh, uh, licensed code and community code, is that like a simple like, directory like you just you just like carve out some directories and like or re, uh, eliminate some directories in the packaging and, and it's all done like how do we like I don't know like how we do it today so we are we are getting um, features based on uh, the license file so if you have a license then your feature are going, is going to be enabled or not <clears throat> but we have sorry we have another level where um, even if um, you have um, a license and the code underneath it does not exist, meaning the we remove the enterprise edition uh, proprietary code, um, GitLab should still uh, load and should still behave uh, as a GitLab community edition. So um, whether you have a license or not, if you install a GitLab community edition package, um, it won't contain the proprietary code. I, I hope I answered your question. It's a bit vague. Yeah, no worries. My I was, answer. My I was, answer. Yeah, no worries. I was kind of curious, like from a repository standpoint, um, um, if folks want to publish a subset of their repo, and mm -hmm. uh, if they want to publish a subset of the repo and discard, like, you know, quote unquote, the enterprise edition stuff, I was kind of yep. curious. We do that by like, like you can just like carve out like a, a bunch of directories with features, or it's by license. Like for folks that are that are using the the that are license sensitive, they just want core, they don't want any like touch of license, like enterprise stuff. How do we segregate that? Um, yeah, so <laughs> we, we do that with the license and with uh, Ruby magic, uh, basically. Luckily, Ruby allows us to do a lot of magic that some programming language, languages wouldn't allow us to do. Fair enough, thank you. Cool. Next item, um, self-managed Docker Hub releases here. Why do we use .0? Uh, yep, this is the distribution team. Uh, Jason P already uh, answered, but I can give you a tiny bit of uh, background there. Dot zero uh, is showing the iteration of the package. We used to use that long time ago. So for example, if we were to find uh, a problem inside of a package or uh, the Docker image, we would increment that number. Um, that was confusing to a lot of people, a lot of people have missed sometimes that we incremented that number. Um, so we decided, I think back in 2015, that from that moment on, we would rather just change the version 
then increment that number to make it really explicit that this is a completely different uh, version of the package. So answer historical reasons at, the, at this moment. Um, and I love it. Thank you. Thank you. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> <All right. laughs> cool. Um, in Docker Hub, we publish latest nightly RC with the auto deploy releases. We how do how do we fold that in? Uh, we don't. Uh, we don't publish official um, Docker images for auto deploy. Um, we um, we publish nightly packages, and nightly packages are essentially um, what we deploy to GitLab.com. We just structure it a bit differently. So um, there has not been any interest from customers that I know of to use the package we deploy to GitLab.com. If there ends up being a need, we can always expose it because we build those packages. It, it's, um, it is um, very simple for us to push this to a, a, a public repository where people might uh, want to use it, but only if it exists. Otherwise, it just gives overhead um, that, uh, that we don't need to uh, have. I agree with the overhead comment. Um, latest and nightly are still, I don't, I don't have customers that use that. Um, RC maybe, but um, yeah. like if they're waiting for a feature that we're, we're baking and they've been asking for it for many, many, many months, um, I'm just kind, of, just kind of curious where, we, where your thoughts were on that. Thank you. Yeah. No worries. Thanks for the questions. Um, Andre. Do you want me to voice it? Can you go for it. Yeah, uh, just curious because we're we're all here, and maybe we can share some some of the f knowledge you've had over the past couple of months. What are the most frequent causes that may cause a release to fail or to fall along the way before reaching production? Is there anything that you want to share with us that we could yep. um, improve? So, reason number one would be um, smoke tests fail. If the smoke tests fail, those are our most important tests that we have. Uh, in the company. If those tests fail, that means that the basic functionality of GitLab is not working for some reason. Um, that doesn't reach Canary even. So staging is where uh, that can fail. It can happen for various reasons. It can be because of a change in Gitly was not uh, backwards compatible with the change in GitLab Rails or um, any of the other components is not compatible with the other. Um, sometimes it can also be tests. So tests themselves fail because of timeouts and so on. But um, we, we want to ensure that we don't progress that package by just saying, well, it's unrelated to the tests. So we, we kind of forced to, to have that test fixed prior to moving forward. Um, in production or rather in Canary itself, uh, we've stopped a number of deploys where um, there has been a visual regression even. Um, that we estimated that a visual regression would cause uh, way more problems when um, shared with the rest of uh, the users on GitLab.com. Um, so it's not only the backend code that can affect us, it can actually, like front-end code can be as uh, effective in, uh, in blocking us. Um, the rule of thumb though uh, that we are trying to follow is um, we expect developers to define or estimate the severity and the priority of uh, any bug fix that is found. And uh, we expect them to, uh, to communicate um, that basically by, by shouting uh, in the proper channels, hey, I found the P1 regression um, and we'll stop uh, the, the production deployment. Sometimes I've, I'll, I'll use my example. Sometimes I've seen uh, developers say it's a P1. When I go to check it out, it's actually not a P1. So um, we kind of reevaluate what it is and uh, continue deployments if it's not uh, as impact impactful. In some cases, we had even S2s that were uh, blocking deployments. But basically, anything that we estimate will cause uh, down the line more work for not only developers, but for support for whoever uh, in this company, we, we, can, we can decide to stop uh, the deployment, but the baseline is smoke tests and base functionality has to uh, function in order to progress. Great, thanks, Marin. What, what would you say are the, like, the best channel to shout, like you said? Releases channel, uh, that is 
linked, I hope, linked mm -hmm. in the handbook page that we wrote. Uh, yeah. If it's not, then um, I'm going to put it on my task. But yeah, I just wanted to call it out on the call so that everybody <laughs> hears it. Thanks. Yeah. May I chime in a little bit here? Question. Always, Mac. So uh, there's also other facets of um, ensuring that things in master go into things that are picked to staging goes uh, well. First is broken masters. I think that will fix a lot of the confidence. I would love to get to, to, to a state where Mary can just cut any, can cut any green view from master, boom, go into staging. That's like 80% confidence. If you look at the chart, we're tracking um, broken masters and it's, it's gotten a bit worse. We're giving it the benefit of a doubt that it's got to be, we have so much entropy this month with a single code base. But Kyle's team and Remy are looking really closely at how can we lock down the gates more. Like masses should just be green all the time. Secondly, we rely on the SDETs or test automation engineers to be an on-call. It's almost like an SRE, but for internal tooling to make sure that Marion's team is not locked. So we have rotations that we just monitor the pipeline continuously and just suss out it's failing, what's going on. Somebody pushing a change, did not update the test. Okay, let's go fix it. Or if it's an actual bug, the latter is more severe. Um, the first one, we were a bit more lenient on it. Okay, it's, it's not a bug, um, let's deploy it, but then there's more in our backlog to go fix the test. Ideally, the development team should be fixing the test, and that's also other improvements that's coming in parallel um, from quality to help, help the delivery and help the process. And um, I think, Skavik, you add the last one, I'm sure you want to vocalize the last stuff good. I was just restating the stuff that Marin was uh, talking about. All right. Um, I know we are a tiny bit over time, um, so I'll just open for any last questions that we might have, and if not, uh, we'll end the call. If uh, you think there is value in doing these uh, AMAs more frequently, uh, hit me up on Slack. I'm more than happy to, to lead them. Um, and I just want to share one other thing uh, that I'm extremely excited about, uh, thanks to uh, some great work that Alessio did together with the Gitali team. Since yesterday, we are deploying master to gitlab.com of Gitali. So Gitali is the first component uh, inside of this company that gets into gitlab.com uh, directly from master. So really, really exciting stuff for us. All right, thanks everyone for the questions and um, hope you have a great weekend. Grant.